Greetings! Welcome back to another adventure here on the Cactus Atlas. Today, we're touring the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum near Tucson, Arizona. Time to adventure! The Arizona Sonora Desert Museum is a combination of things. It's part botanical garden, part zoo. There are things about mineralogy, geology here, and even some things around the arts. So there's quite a bit of variance and a lot of different things to do. Uh, really interesting place. Here's a map, an overview of the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. You can see it's quite extensive. I believe I read that there's almost two miles of walking through all of this stuff, so it's a pretty sizable park. Looks like there's also hiking here. We're doing a trail that they say takes about a half an hour to do. Be careful, if it's hot, we're trying to get this done early, uh, but they do say there's shade and ramadas along the way. For example, you have this little spot, so little places to cool off. I assume it takes 30 minutes because of taking your time and reading and taking pictures, so we'll let you know. My favorite thing, be aware of rattlesnakes. So will we see a rattler today finally on the Cactus Atlas? No. If you're not from Arizona and not used to the desert and really want to good, get a good feel for the types of native plants here, this desert trail that we're walking on, this loop, does a really good job of that. I don't know if you could see right back there. It's hard to see because it blends in so well. There is a hairy looking pig-like creature down there. There's some other ones down there too. Those are known as javelina. Javelina are wild peccaries. And to us, they're really neat if you haven't seen them, but they are pests. <laughs> These will oftentimes come into your yard at night if you live in the desert and uproot and dig up little succulent cacti, make an absolute mess of things. A very nice, cool place in the shade. I imagine they'll be hanging out here for a while as it's starting to get pretty hot. And those there are choya. And I can tell you, even though they look very nice and soft and fuzzy maybe, you do not want to mess with that. You can see all the little spines all over them. Another thing that we see a lot of in our neighborhoods here in the Sonora Desert are coyotes. To us, they're pretty common sights. It's always neat to see them. I, it, it, the novelty hasn't worn off for me. Uh, but here's a habitat behind us where the coyotes supposedly roam. I do know they're pretty elusive and probably don't want to be out during the day. So we may not see them, but another thing featured here on the desert trail. Okay, I lied to you guys. There's one laying right there in the shade. Do you see it? He blends right in. Makes me wonder when I'm walking around hiking in the desert, even in our neighborhood, like how many times do I pass them right by and not even know they're there? You know, I think I figured out something here. Every time we visit a wildlife refuge or zoo or habitat like this, every time I say, oh, we're not gonna see an animal today, lo and behold, the animal materializes as if it's magic or something. Um, this happened a couple weeks ago. We went out to Out of Africa Wildlife Animal Park in Camp Verde, Arizona. By the way, if you wanna check that video out, I'll put a link in the description. Same thing there. We finished the desert loop trail, the one that said it would take about a half hour long, and I'd say that was about right. Um, we kind of lost a little bit of track of time and made some side stops, but if you take your time and look at everything and read the signs, half hour seems reasonable. Look at this lizard, guys. I think that's a chuckwalla, actually, if I'm not mistaken. We wanted to see one earlier. He doesn't seem to be afraid at all. This is not in one of the exhibits, by the way. Look at that, I could, I, whoa. <laughs> now you always hear me talk about, I always wanna see rattlesnakes. Here's, here it is, although this one's in captivity. I would be terrified to come across that on one of my hiking adventures in the desert. Mm -hmm. I fear that someday I will. Oh, look at all the little frogs here. Those are really pretty. 
Looks like they have taken accessibility in mind here at the museum. Here in the Bobcat exhibit, I was trying to find it. I was looking around and looked right there. It's like a little cat tree or a big cat tree, I'd say. So we have a special place in our hearts for bobcats. A few years ago in our backyard, there was a mother bobcat and a couple babies. And we'll put some pictures for you to check out from that. So we've had some very up close and personal experience with bobcats in our own backyard. Oh, and look, it's the ocelot. We couldn't see him from up above, but look how beautiful that is. He's just hanging out in the shade, keeping cool, which is exactly what I'd be doing on a day like today. I hear it's supposed to get up to 107 degrees. Now, depending on when you're visiting, if it's a day like today, it's the summer, it's very hot. This is a really nice place to cool off. So there's, there are places to escape the heat temporarily if we need to. Everywhere you look, just very beautiful habitat. One really nice thing that I'd like to remark on is that as you walk around every once in a while, um, employees of the zoo that seem pretty knowledgeable about things will oftentimes just walk up to you and um, tell you some really interesting facts about what you're looking at. And I really like that. It's a very personable type of vibe here at this museum. We're gonna go see hummingbirds now. You can hear it chirping. Look at that. You see that, Amy? <laughs> it's turned into kind of a fun game looking for these because they're, they're really everywhere. Um, there's that one again over there. They just kind of fly right around you and you'll be walking around looking and it's like boom, like right in your face. So. Uh, really, really cool. Well, that was quite pleasant. Whatever that one was, the one with the purple head, I believe it said Costa's Hummingbird. I don't know if that was the same one every time that I was able to get the camera right up to it or not, but it wasn't afraid at all. And Amy had sat on a bench for a minute and she said that was a really good strategy because they were flying like right around her. So th that hummingbird exhibit was really, really, really nice. This seems like a really nice place to go if you've had a really long week at work perhaps or a bad day or something and you just need to calm down. This museum is the place to go to do that. All right, we're gonna go into the aviary. Maybe hard to see, but there's some quail right there. We get a lot of those in our yard and you'll oftentimes see them with a big group of babies, just really tiny, tiny little ones. That looks like maybe one that's recently grown up. But I'm assuming that's the mom and pop and the two children. This is another nice place to go to escape the direct sunlight. It's very beautiful back here. I haven't seen too many birds, but it's worth it just for the serenity of this place. I'm sitting smack dab in the center of the walk-in aviary. I think this is probably the best seat in the house. Um, this was, somebody was sitting here for a while. I saw him leave, so I'm like, let's go take a, a load off for a little bit and enjoy the aviary. This aviary is such a nice place to come and clear your mind. You've got the sound of running water around you, birds feeding, everything's very calm and serene. You can chill out quite properly here. I could totally take a nap back here or meditate. I need some nice sitar music playing right now in the background, I think. Now it's pointed out to us that you have to keep a close eye out and you'll probably walk by and not realize there are birds everywhere. That is one fuzzy looking cactus. Look at that. It's just, it, it makes you just want to reach out and cuddle it, doesn't it? Which would be a horrible idea, I'm sure. 
We are here at the labyrinth. I'm going to get to the center in record time. You ready for this? Count me down from three. Three, two, one, go! It's the cactus garden. This, this looks like a little dainty garden. I'm gonna go traipsing around in there really quick. So, Amy, how, like, look at those. See those like golden barrel, I believe. I didn't see a sign for it, mm -hmm. but we were we have those in our yard. We were told they're like hundreds of, like they're worth a couple hundred bucks a piece. Apparently. Yeah. We've got a lot of stuff in our yard that we could sell. <laughs> Make some money to keep this YouTube channel going. Oh, there's one golden barrel aside. Oh yeah, see, I was right. See, Golden I'm knowledgeable. Barrel. I'm knowledgeable, guys. So I know you you want to subscribe to our channel because <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you straight up how it is to the best of my knowledge. But I'm sure I'm going to screw some things up along the way. So do forgive me. Ooh, look at these. These look like prickly pear, but the spines look different. Yeah, they're called, it's called cowboy whiskers. I want one of these. It looks like we could like pluck, pluck them off and make a mustache for me. Yeah. For our viewers that haven't experienced the Sonoran Desert or come to Arizona, I give you the saguaro cactus. They've got a lot of personality sometimes. Like you'll see them like with different arms and you'll imagine people doing funny poses and things. So uh, yeah, perfect for Valentine's Day. Even for someone that lives in the desert, I love the cactus garden. That was awesome. I think cactus are my favorite plants. There's just so much variety. There's so many different ones. I just had a thought about the boojum. Basically, that looks like the perfect Christmas tree, doesn't it? <laughs> we, I mean, maybe we have to trim it a little bit, but I think I know what we're doing for Christmas this year, Amy. Get ready. As you can see, as you walk around the park, it's interlaced with little shady areas like this. So if you want to get out of the sun for a minute, it seems like they're all in all these nooks and crannies. You got nice places like this, benches. I'm going to take advantage of this and drink a nice cold water here in a second. But um, yeah, and you can see up there too, you got vultures up on the tree. You see those? And for those of you that ever wanted to hear a rattlesnake rattle, it's a real rattle. I don't think I'd like to have, hear that sound walking around the desert. I fear that one day I shall, I keep asking for it. Now that I hear it, ugh, it gives me the willies. If you know where to look and you're patient, you will see some cool things. That's a Mexican gray wolf. Hanging out in the sprinklers. They turn the sprinklers on for them. He's just wetting himself down. Can you see the wolf? Look how well he blends in with his surroundings. I hear there's a cave somewhere down here. I actually do feel cool air, don't you? We found the best place to cool off here, so keep this in mind. Let's go, let's go see. This is an exhibit on... The origin of the Earth and Moon. 4.5 billion years ago. Check this out. You see the singeing coming out of that nice cool mine. It was so nice in there. Oh my gosh, but now my skin is singeing again. I see the steam rising off my skin. Can I see the swamp? Heck no, I can't see a swamp. But if I can go back 160 million years in time, according to that, I sure could. This would have been a muddy mess, apparently. And there you have it, Arizona throughout time. Wouldn't it be an interesting thing to be able to fast forward and rewind 
time right in front of your eyes to see it change. Refreshing. And one thing that's awesome here is so you get to refill your water bottles. Ironwood Terrace's quick serve grill. Let's go take a quick peek and see what they have. Burgers and sandwiches, pizza, yogurt and drinks. And this looks like it's closed. Yeah, Akatio Cafe. So it looks like when that's open, that would be a nice place to grab a bite to eat. And we have an aquarium to check out. Ah, yet another nice cool sanctuary here from the sun. Those guys look really serious. Thinking hard. We have the gift shop now. Oh, look at all the pottery. Oh, look at these. Cool assortment of polished minerals and lots of educational books. Lots of condiments, jellies, pretty standard fare for a lot of your gift shops in Arizona. Lots of t-shirts. Get yourself a plush javelina for $22.50. All right, well that just about does it for our tour today and just want to give a couple final thoughts about the Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum. Some things that might interest you here are if you're not from Arizona and you're not familiar with the Sonoran Desert um, or just desert life in general, creatures, plants, things of that nature, you'll definitely want to come here. You'll learn a lot. It's great for that reason. Even if you do live in the Sonoran Desert, it's still worth coming as you'll certainly learn something new that you never knew before and it's just a very relaxing experience. It's, just, it's a nice, calm place to come. Um, and the best news is if you're an Arizona resident or a resident of Sonora, Mexico, you get a discount. You will get about $4, I think, off of the regular admission price, approximately, maybe a little bit less. I think regular admission is about 20 bucks per adult. Even with that being said, if you compare that price to other habitats, like out of Africa, Arizona, places like that, this place is definitely a little bit more affordable in that regard. Cactus Atlas, two big thumbs up. Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum, let's do it. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Let us know that you like our content. Also, make use of that notification bell. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new videos, which we're doing all of the time. Well, we had a good time today, hope you did too. We'll see you on a new adventure really soon. And until that time, take it easy. Remember, a javelina ain't no pig. Thank you.